character of a panda playing a copper trumpet illustrates two key features of Wilson's disease, also called hepatolenticular degeneration. In Wilson's disease, there's a problem with the copper metabolism, and on imaging, you get a panda sign in the brainstem. And this panda sign in the brainstem is caused by T2 hyperintensity in the tegmentum with normal signal intensity of the red nucleus, giving it the appearance of a panda, where the cerebral peduncles are the ears of the panda. And if you have a lot of fantasy, you can discover a second panda a little bit lower in the brainstem with the central tegmental tracts. Patients with Wilson's disease often present in the first decade with liver symptoms such as vomiting and jaundice and ascites. And this 13-year-old boy presented with abdominal distension and his T1-weighted images, you can see that there's increased T1 signal in the inner part of the lentiform nucleus, the globus pallidus, and in the brainstem. And this is caused by the accumulation of copper in the brain. This is a 14-year-old girl with dystonia with only T2-weighted images, high signal in the putamen and caudate. And despite adequate therapy, her MRI deteriorated after three years. The Neuropsychiatric symptoms usually present in the third and fourth decade. They are caused because the basal ganglia are involved in movement and mood regulation and this adult patient presented with hypomania. And on the flare image you can see that there is mainly involvement of the outer rim of the putamen, a sign classic for Wilson's disease. And again you can see the sparing of the red nucleus. Wilson is a problem with the copper metabolism and there's uptake of copper from the diet by the bowel in the bloodstream and it is excreted in the bile. And this schematic drawing shows an enterocyte and a hepatocyte and the direction is exactly the opposite, as you would expect, of the copper. And in the anthracite, there's a protein called ATP7A that takes care of the uptake of copper. And in the liver, there's this protein ATP7B that takes care of excretion of copper in the bile. And in Wilson's disease, there's a problem with ATP7B. B, so there is less excretion of copper in the bile. And copper is also a coenzyme for ceruloplasmin. It binds to ceruloplasmin. So if there's decreased binding to ceruloplasmin, there's also an increase in free copper. So the copper in the body goes up. And then there's uptake in the brain, especially in the putamen and uh, globus pallidus. And this copper interrupts the mitochondria. It's a coenzyme for, for example, cytochrome C and dopamine beta hydroxylase. And this copper interrupts the mitochondrial DNA replication. So the mitochondrial uh, membrane disintegrates and there's neuronal death in this triatum. And Besides that, there was also a study in 2013 that showed that copper also modulates the neurotransmission, so there's decreased inhibition of GABAergic neurons in the striate because of high copper. And all these things explain the symptoms in Wilson's disease. In the differential diagnosis is, of course, Lee syndrome, because that's how we got here. Japanese encephalitis that I also discussed in the differential diagnosis of Lee syndrome. Profound asphyxia in the neonate and 
Creutzfeldt-Jacob disease that we're going to look at in the next vlog.